Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moneyball series. It sounds amazing to hear that again. It's been a few days for me since I recorded an episode, mainly because it took me so long to put these views together and to put the spreadsheets together. So this episode is going to be a long episode, just so you're aware. Right off the bat, it is going to be a long episode with chapters, of course. We're going to go through my entire recruitment process, right? We're going to be going through all the steps that we need to take in terms of using the spreadsheets, using the stats in the game. I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide of how to do it in my way. But that is what I'm here for, right? I'm here to do all the hard stuff, take all the time to do the complex stuff, and then hopefully make it as easy as possible for everybody else watching and playing along themselves. And with that being said, let's get into the episode. Okay, what you can see here is Liga Un last season. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the stats from 11th, 12th, and 13th place teams here. And how it's going to work is as follows. We're going to go on to 11th place team first, and we can see their squad there, right? We can see their squad nice and easy. We're going to input our striker view, our striker squad view right there. Now, it's basically just giving us the stats we look at on our own players for, for a striker, but just for their own team, right? That's what we can see right now. Uh, we can sort them by striker and we sort them by goals, and that's what you get there. What you're going to do now is hit Control p and you're going to select web page file like that. Just save it wherever you want. I saved it in my documents, but it doesn't really matter where. Right, the next stage is going to be this. Okay, now the exciting part for me. I get to show you my Moneyball spreadsheet. Now, this is pretty easy to use once the formulas are in, and it, to be fair, it is pretty simple to put together. It's quite a simple formula, but it's all about getting down to that bottom line. So I'm going to show you now how exactly we're going to use it to try and recruit and search for a striker. Okay, here we are. You have my Moneyball spreadsheet right here. This is in all its glory. It is very basic, got to be honest with you. All it is is three players copied and pasted from the game. It adds up all of their stats into a total amount, which is the amount you see under total amount. And then we divide that number by three to get our Moneyball number. Now, why would I divide it by three and do it this way? I mentioned earlier in the series that picking one team and trying to copy their stats is dangerous because they may have a specific tactical style, they might have a specific player that really inflates some players' stats and not others. It's just merely a way of eliminating outliers. That's all it is. And try and get us down to one number that we can search from. It's slightly better targeted than stag stats that he did, uh, where he took the best performing players over the top five leagues. What we are buying here is we are buying stats to finish in the exact position that we are aiming for this season. So in theory, if we buy the same stats of the players in the same positions as the players that we use, we should then in theory be able to finish in that position, especially if you buy it right across the board. Obviously, football is different and it doesn't quite work like that. It's way more variable. Teams are performing differently next season. But generally, that's the idea, right? That's the idea is you, you're buying the stats, not players. We are buying the stats from the players that finish mid-table playing in the striker position right here. We are buying all the strikers, averaging them out that gives us one player. Those three players will equal one player at the end of this. Unfortunately for us, the likelihood is that it's going to give us a really good bunch of stats to buy from and we can't afford to buy the player anyway when we eventually do find them in the player search. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, the players at the top, you can ignore them, my own players. This is going to change. You'll see it change in a second. What I'm going to do now is go to my documents and just merely drag over the file that I made a second ago, or the three files. Okay, so when you control P and you open that file in Excel, this is how it displays. So it literally takes the view that you've currently got in that squad and you can open Excel, and this is what they appear like. As we can see on this list, it's not really a difficult one to decide which striker we're going to pick. We're going to pick Rip Hart. I did double check in the game. He did actually play striker most of the seasons, although he had, he's had he got left wing selected there. He did play striker. I think he only played like three games outside of the striker position. So he was a striker. And it, the text is a little small here. You can maximize it. can drag a little bit if you want to. It's a bit easier for you to see. But yeah, the whole point is that you can just see it there. It's been copied and pasted in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of these. I'm just going to copy and paste from his name all the way down there to the end. Copy. I'm going to go to my other one. I'm going to replace Gory here. I'm just going to control, paste. And now, as you can see, if I undo that, you can see all the numbers are changing, right? You see the Moneyball number and the amounts are completely changing. If I go backwards and forwards, you can see as his numbers go in, it changes all of this. Unfortunately, I should probably have pasted this. Let me go back and paste it in as value. If you paste it in as value, it just appears normally. That's what you want. So there you go. That is as simple as that. And that means now all these are going to change. Then I'll add the other two players in from the other two teams. Here again, nice and easy. We've got a striker that's clearly got the most goals. So again, name, just copy across there. And the final one has just been put in there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have done our first bit of money ball scouting 
data analysis and applying stats to our recruitment strategy. We have done the first proper one, I would say, there by putting three players and getting an average. Right, okay, so that is the total amount. And what that does is our statisticians, they crunch it together, they get in there, they divide it by three, and they give us our moneyball number. Now, you could do this with a lot more than three players. I've stuck it to just three because I had to make five of these sheets, and I wanted to make sure it was done in a time frame where I could show it to you. And, I mean, probably the more players you get, the better. You know, the more the more players you use, the more accurate your data is going to be. But if you're looking for mid-table teams, only so many mid-table teams you can use, you could use them in other leagues, but I would probably just stick to your own if you're going to look at it from, for a baseline of stats. But it's up to you. you can do it. There's many different ways you could do this, right? There's so many different ways you could do this. Here we go, then. Here are the stats. Here's what we're going to buy this season. The stats that we are going to buy for the striker are, are as follows. Goals of 13... Assists of 1, non-penalty XG per 90 of 0.33. Expected goals of a performance of 2.29. Minutes per goal, 249. Conversion percentage of 13.33%. Shots on target ratio of 46%. Shot on target ratio of 46%. Shots on target per 90 of 1.3. Shots total per 90 of 2.9. Sprints per 90 of 6.0. Distance covered per 90 of 6.9. Offsides we wouldn't care about. Dribbles per 90 of 1.2. Open play key passes per 90 is 1.06. Header one ratio is 54%. Headers one per 90 is 6.2. Pressures attempted per 90 is 15.07. Pressures completed is 5.15. So that is it. That is the player we are buying that's got those stats. And as long as they're playing a relatively similar league to ours, we're just going to buy that player. Now, because we've got no money to spend, what we can look at, I think, early on is two things. Players that have got similar stats to this to have their contract expiring at the end of the season and players that are transfer listed. So we're going to look at that first before we then look at just generally players with this because we really are restricted with £1 million transfer budget, right? So that is how you'd go about doing it for the striker. So let's put this into Foot Manager and let's see who it throws up for us. So what I'm going to do now is just literally go through here and click and add all these stats and add them all together and see what comes back. It'd be almost absolutely nobody will come up with those exact stats, but we'll see what it looks like anyway at the end of it. So I'll see you in a second when I've done all of this for you. Okay, I will make sure that you have these available to download as well because that can be quite annoying to, to go through every single time. We've actually got some players here that have come up on the stats, which I'm quite surprised by now. I've got to be honest with you, as I was going on the list, everybody was, there was a lot of people showing until I got to head of one ratio and went up to 54 and that killed a lot of people off. So there might be quite a few players available that just aren't very good in the air. So we'll see how it goes. There's a few players to look at here. Now, they're mainly in lower leagues, which isn't great, but there is one. Now, we have here Emil Burgreen. Now he's on the list. He's scored. What did he get? Here? He got twenty. He got thirteen goals this season. His non penalty XG is all of his stats are in line with what we've asked for, or better. And he plays in the Nordic Bet Liga. I mean, he's really cheap. You know, I'm gonna probably scout him. We're gonna we're gonna shortlist him and scout him. I think. I mean, I was actually really looking to do this and just put contract expiry for like six months. And see if anybody sort of turns up here. Okay, so what we've done is we've looked at that and there's nobody really else that we like in this list. So let's have a look and take some stuff off just a little bit. So what could we drop here? First thing I would drop is probably the head of one ratio because we could get like a smaller in behind striker to like 44 maybe. Let's go to that. Don't forget there's only players with their contract expiring. There's not really anybody there that's played at a decent level. Let's take the contract off, see who's available here. Okay, as easy as Cuba plays in the Portuguese Premier League. So good time that a football he gets the check for that. 36 games played, 19 goals, expected goals performance of 10. That means he wasn't getting many chances. He was still scoring them. That's pretty good. Minutes per goal is very good, isn't it? 159. Is he the best for that? Minutes per goal. He's not. Emil's pretty good for that, though. Christ. Yeah, I think he's worth a scout as well. He looks really good according to the scouts. He's definitely worth a scout. I think more than likely out of our price range. But, uh, you know, we'll scout him anyway. You never know what's going to happen. We could get a takeover. Who knows? But maybe, maybe for next year. Because at the very least, right, if we... If we finish and we do survive, we're likely going to be aiming for mid-table again if we end up just surviving in the league. So we'll look for him anyway as a good option up front. Okay, I've just dropped some more of the settings. We've got some more players in here. Ibrahim Sissoko has appeared as a striker. Now, apparently he scored 23 goals in the same league as us this season. He, I do remember him scoring against us, actually, if I remember rightly. He did score against us. He absolutely banged him in, didn't he? 17 goals. Definitely worth a scout. Again... A little pricey for us, which sounds ridiculous at like 300 or grand, but maybe he, maybe he could be good enough. Now, maybe he does end up in our price range if we can sell one or two players, because it might only be like 500 guys we can get him for. And in any case, it looks like he's a really good shout, considering he just played the same level of football as we were at, and he scored all those goals. Andreas Albers here has got 14 into 36, almost a goal every other game, just slightly worse than that. Uh, his minutes per goal isn't as good. Conversion ratio is not too bad, though. Shot on target ratio is very good, so maybe the type of chances he was getting wasn't quite good enough. So I think looking at that, his head of one ratio is very good. I think he's definitely worth a scout. That's another little 
potential diamond in the rough there. Be like a backup for Morgan, I'm thinking. Now, Fabian Kloss is six foot five. He scored 14 goals in 19 starts and he's on a free transfer. That screams to me, scout him up. Is he going to be able to offer us lots? No. But again, talking about value, if we can get him on a free transfer like two grand a week, then that's a great money ball signing. The stats that we're getting from him, or we should be getting from him, for the transfer of zero is incredible. So we don't know if it's going to be zero. It depends on his wages, but he could be a really good signing. So we're going to scout him anyway and see how he comes up. Okay, find another player. I've dropped the stats quite a bit at this point to try and just populate the list a little more. And then I can cross-reference their stats manually if I need to. But one player stood out here. So this lad here managed to score 11 goals and 6 starts and 28 sub-appearances. Now, the reason why he's interested is his contract is up in the summer. So he could be a free transfer. So we're going to definitely scout him and see how the scout report comes back on him and just see if there's anything we could do there. That might be worth like a... Yeah, like a, an emergency contract as a backup at the very least because i'm not sure there's a lot here that's gonna change us overnight i'm a little concerned about the striker options there and i mean looking back at our squads are we good enough to set what we've got probably not i mean gory's okay i don't know we we might be all right i think that i may as well cash in on hamill because i don't think i think we've got enough players in his, his profile of player if we can get another player like gory for like half the price that we can sell hamill for i think that's a good a good transfer for us and then we can use the other money to invest in other areas of the team so like what's Hamill given us here like he's given us this is the center back you don't want to see that like his minutes per goal ratio is actually not too bad at all but he does play in our team we create a lot of chances this year which helps him a little bit I think the biggest way to look at the difference in the strikers is this right you look at Gory Morgan and look at their xg overperformance 5.7 5.48 and the difference between them and then Hamill Mesa are two backup strikers, 0 0.84, 0 0.81. So when you've got players that are good enough to just sort of do their role, we're getting these two. And when you get players that fit the tactic really well and can excel in their position, we're getting those two. So these are the kind of two players that we need. So do we go looking around for players that are overperforming their XG slightly more? Do we look for this stat only now as a, as a different way of looking at it quickly? Because there could be an outlier. Right? There could be somebody who's really high on this stat, but maybe they're terrible in the L, they're terrible at dribbling, or they're terrible at getting shots on target, or something like that. And uh, yeah, there might be a reason why they're just standing at one stat. But if you look at that, that is by far the biggest stat apart from goals that I think stands them out from the, others, the other two strikers. So let's try that. Let's give that a go. Look at... Just extra performance only. It actually gives us quite a big list. It's 5.5, isn't it, for those? Let's just think of contract status expires six months. Does that give us anybody here? Well, we've got some obscure leagues here, haven't we? We've got the Q80 First Division, the Qatar League, Saudi First Division. We've got some the Thai League. There's some really interesting different players here that we could look at, you know. I mean, Maddie Diara's got an A. Somebody's already looked at him. Apparently, he's really good, Maddy Diara. Let's look at his stats here. Only the nine goals and 30 appearances is okay. His extra performance was 5.28. but so probably wasn't getting much service. And maybe he wasn't even playing as a striker. Maybe do we give him a chance, though? He's not playing the greatest of levels. Renan Gorn here as well. Playing in the Q81 first league. I don't know how good he is, but we're going to give him a scout. Okay, I think we might have just found a diamond in the rough here. We've got Keenan Kodro. Not from Keenan and Cal, Keenan Kodro. He plays in the Hungarian division. He scored 21 and 41. And even in last season in real life, he scored quite a few... Even last season in real life, he scored a few goals. I have no idea how good he is, but he was in the Athletic Bilbao first team for a couple of years. And the Sausage had first team for a little bit as well. Do do we do we take a chance? Like maybe he's pretty good. Ten caps, two goals. Like he could be. I am aware that we are playing in you know the French first division, top division next season. That's a that's a problem. But he's worth a scout. Like this is the level we're at, right? This is the level of finances we've got to spend. It's from players like this. Okay, Cavet Rezai plays for the Iranian national team. He scored fifteen goals and thirty games for Tractor in Iran, and looks like he could be another little you know. Oh, where's he gone here? He's done here somewhere. Yeah, he's got 21 and 38 X year performance of 6.98. I do like this stat, you know. So this is the thing, right? We're just going to go through and notice that maybe certain stats really do give you a good indication of how good a player is in their certain position. And then also maybe not. Like, we're seeing so far that my two strikers that have this is what's really helping indicate that they are better than the other strikers. And these lads can come in and be absolutely terrible and do all that theory. So we'll see. But there's a lot of players here who look like they could be half decent shouts. I'm just going to scout them all. We'll see what comes back. It does worry me when they play for like a lesser league and I've never seen their name before. So I think they can't possibly be any good. But you, you never know, you know. It's, we'll trust the numbers. We'll trust the numbers. It's the money we'll save. We'll trust the numbers. Right, that'll do for strikers for now. Let's move on to number 10's cams, however you want to call them. Okay, let's move on to number 10's then. So we're going to look for attacking and field players. This one's going to be maybe slightly harder to, to easily... Uh, guess which one is the best. So we're just going to sort by position first. I think dribbles per 90 
and open play key passes. So really those two there, the first word look at, the first things I'm going to look at from the two players. Okay, so on reflection, this was their best starting central field player that played central field. Now there are other players that had pretty high stats. They played like on the wing or something like that. So this player here is the best one. So we're going to take him for Troyes. What I'm do now, I'm going to just do this off of camera quickly and just get the three players, put them in. I'll bring you back with me when we actually look at the stats and we look at the stats in detail in the spreadsheet. Right, that is now complete. So just to quickly show you how this works, it's really, really simple. So what I've got here is I've got all the information from my custom view that's just copied and pasted through the control P function, nice and easy. Then here, all I've done for the formulas is simply this. So in goals, I've got in there, I've done equals I3, which is this one here, plus I4, which is that one, plus I5, which is that one, hit enter. And what it's going to do is add up all those and give me the total. So if I change that to a five, it automatically changes it to there and there. Let's go back to a four. And the same for all those, exactly the same. It's just, you know, K345, L45, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on the list. Then the money will number is really, really simple again. So all I do here is I go equals I12, which is this one here, then slash through. And that's divided by three. And that gives me my money will number. So there's, there's two ways you can do this, right? Like I've done this for every single position. Now what you can do, probably the better way to do it is to have just one main view of everything and try and get as many stats in as you can. So you can just do it one time. It saves you a lot of time and effort. Like the way that I've done it, trying to break it down to specific positions. I'm not sure for the average person, the, the time and effort is, is worth the benefit um, that you'll get from it, to be honest with you. But for me in this series, I think it is. I want to try and break it down as specific as possible to our our position that we're looking at right so for us it works it makes sense if you're doing it at home i would recommend using one you don't have to do it this way i've just done it this this way and as you can see at the bottom you can see all the positions here for the different ones as we'll get to those all in a second so for our attacking midfielder we are looking at we we'll skip these bits here we'll go straight into the meat and drink of it let's look at assists per 90 we're looking at 0 0.10 effectively is what we're looking at there Expect this is per 90, 0 0.16. Open play key passes per 90. That's a very interesting stat for me. 1.42. That's not very high. That's okay. Chances credit is not bad. Next thing we look at is dribbles per 90. Dribbles per 90 is 0 0.89. That's not too good. You know, that's not too high. And two of these lads are bringing it down a bit. But in the teams we looked at, only one of them is using a genuine number 10. The rest of them are either using two session field players in a 4-3-3 or a flat 4-4-2. So now I honestly cannot believe it, but there are multiple players that hit every single stat. Like not at great levels of football, mind you, but there are multiple players. And the first one is right here. We've got Frederick Lornberg from Randers FC. Now, how much is he worth? He's not worth too much, is he? Now, I don't think he actually plays an attacking field role that often, but he's got everything that we're asking for. Assists per 90, a play key passes, progressive passes, dribbles per 90. He's got the lot. That's such an impressive player to come out of that. I'm really impressed with that. I didn't think anybody would appear. He is probably the only one though. So let's take a few of these down and see what else we can uncover. A couple of good players here at the top. They're just worth way too much money. But Pepe's transfer to here, this uh, lad from Brazil, could be worth a look. He's got pretty good stats across the board. Sprints per 90, distance cover per 90 is good. Dribbles per 90 is pretty low. Open play key passes is good. I mean, we could probably get him for like free, a free transfer and maybe like 35% of the next sale. So Christian Adurso here looks like he's got pretty good stats across the board. My only concern is that he has uh, got a pretty poor average rating. 6.76. Who did he play for? Did they go down or something? Can we see that? I don't think we can see that, can we? No. But his average rating is really low, but he, his stats looks really good. So I don't know. We're going to scout him and uh, see how he gets on. But I don't, I'm quite I'm optimistic about him as well. Just give me myself up here because I think I'm missing out some of the stats for you. Apologies for that. Uh, there was somebody that just looked out there, and Philip Clement, yeah, so if we look at him across the board there, like, again, going right across the, the line, you can see that, that his stats are pretty good as well. Again, average rating is, actually, his average rating is good. I was looking at the, I was looking at the wrong players, looking at um, Galeos there. No, he looks, he looks good to me. He looks pretty good across the board. There aren't too many things that stand out as a huge negative, so he's definitely going to get scouted. I mean, again, technically, he's going to cost our entire budget, which he's, you know, we can't afford. But the idea is that maybe we offer them like zero pounds up front, but like 50% of the next sale, something like that, right? Maybe we do that and try and get them on a free transfer. That's something that we can do if we can't actually afford to pay any money right now. Yeah, there's nobody else, I think, too noticeable here. So what I'm going to do now is, oh, Franco Vasquez, maybe. Yeah, I'll carry on looking for some more tens off of camera in a second here. And then what I'll do is I'll bring you back with me when we look at central midfielders, like pivot players, and we'll look at some stats based around those type of players. This one I'm less concerned about because I think we've got... If we can get Piri back in on like a, a good transfer offer for us, like maybe like a, I don't know, 100 grand, I probably would take him. But I don't know. 
I, I'm not as bothered about this position. It's the rest I'm really concerned about. Had Jam's a really good wing back, but we're probably going to lose him. I think left wing back is the biggest problem area for us to sign. Like right now, what we're doing is we are basically just populating our shortlist, right? We're just trying to get as many players onto our shortlist as possible that fit our stats. And then we can look at, you know, who are our top three targets for each position in terms of value for money. Because there might be two or three players that are very close on stats, but the valuations are grossly different. And that makes the biggest difference to us in a money ball save, right? Who's the best value for money? It may not always be the cheapest player. It might be that somebody else has got slightly better stats and the extra money is worth those stats. But it also may not be the case, right? It's those things that we have to we have to consider in this. Uh, right now, uh, as we're sort of almost getting to halfway point through looking at the players, I am a little concerned. I don't think... Like, even the cheap options that I'm looking at, I almost feel like that we should easily be able to get those players. And it's just having having no money at all is just a killer. And even our cheap options are too expensive for us. So we need to either make some monumental sales in the transfer market. And I don't think we can really. It's going to be had jam for like maybe, if we could send him for like seven. Like if we could get like an incredible offer, like, you know, seven million pounds, something like that for had jam, that would be great. And that would have a lot. But like that, that's wishful thinking at this point. Right, okay, I will see you in a second. Then we'll go through the central midfielders and see who we can bring in in that position. Yes, okay, you might notice something a little different. It is the next day. It did take me a long time to get through the stuff yesterday, uh, but I wanted to make sure I started getting it recorded so I can get it out to you as soon as possible. But yeah, this has actually been recorded the morning after. So same episode for you, but it's a different day, different day for me. I thought I'd just point it out then in case you're like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? What's you know, costume change? No, it wasn't costume change. It is just the next the next morning um, from the night before. So there you are. Right, carrying on. Central midfield, I've already done this one, by the way. I've already put them in for you. So we can just see here. The money one number is. We're looking for a central midfielder, so a pivot player. Issues to consider. The teams we're taking players from, are they playing two pivots? Like two CDMs in our case. So what I've tried to do is in the 4-3-3 team, I've taken their CDM. In the team that does play two pivots, I have taken their more advanced one of the two pivots. And in the other team, I've taken their more defensive CM because they're more advanced CM. I hate using these terms, but they're more advanced CM are used in our attacking midfield one. So there could be a case for us making three of these, a, a 10, a CM, and a CDM for all of these stats. Alternatively, we can just use uh, stag stats for when we go into probably future seasons. For now, I'm just going to use the one and try and use it off of both. But maybe in the search here for the more like defensive central midfielder, we can take off some of the more attacking stats, maybe bump up some of the defensive, and then vice versa for the more advanced one, right? So that's what we can do here anyway. But anyway, let's get into the actual numbers we're here for, isn't it? By the way, I absolutely bloody love this. I love this series. I love this part. I absolutely love going through the numbers and seeing who comes up. Um, it's a bit... It feels, it feels a little bit like it's going to be a lost cause because we can do all the best scouting in the world here. We can pick out all the best players for for our for our tactic in our moneyball players. But we've got no money to bloody spend on them. Like there, there's having little money and there's having like no money. I mean, our budget's one million. What is PSG's gonna be? 200, 150? I don't actually know what PSG's budget. I don't think I've ever played as them. Not in re not in for a few years anyway. I did when they first got taken over, I think. Which was like back in what, FM 11, FM 12, around that sort of time, wasn't it? Okay, so open play key passes per 90 is 1.1. Chances created per 90 is 0 0.25. Progressive passes is 4.9. Passes completed per 90 is 51. Pass completion, 86. By the way, just on this, passes completed is not something I necessarily care about at all. It's just, I just threw it in for the extra information to be there in the list for you. But of all of these here, passes completed per 90 is the least. Well, I probably should go through this a little more when I'm going through myself. I'll do maybe in the next season, I'll go through it more. But there are a couple of these that are there, but are not ones I'd necessarily look at first or care about too much. But yeah, passes completed, probably not as much more. Than, and pass completion for attacking and field players, like they might have slightly less pass completion, but they get more open play key passes, right? So if they've got less pass completion, that's not necessarily a bad thing if they're turning it into good chances, right? Dribbles completed per 90 is 0.53. Sprints per 90 is 11. Distance cover 97.4 miles. They all pretty much have the same one, to be honest. Tackle one ratio is 83, uh, 73%. Tackles per 90 is 3.31. Interceptions per 92.6. Pushes attempted is 21. Pushes completed is 7. And possessions one is 13. They're finally rounding it off with a header one ratio of 65%. That is your money ball number for a player that gets you mid table in the French league, at least in my case, in my first season. This number could easily change. If you are playing at home and you're playing. In almost any country, really. If you get to the end of your first season and you happen to have a look at this, I mean, I'm not expecting you to divide all by three, but maybe just look at a couple of players and see if it's roughly similar to that. That'd be interesting for me to know in your saves. Because if you were to do soak tests, 
where you just holiday for the season. You know, in an isolated soak test, you could throw quite random result, right? Like, who would have thought Leicester City would have won the Premier League in 2016? Like, you can get, you could easily, like, soak a, a test and get something random. So, okay, let's search this and see who we can get. And welcome back. So there is no player with the exact central field of stats that we had before. However, at least I'm out the way this time, so you guys should see the players as they, as they appear, which is good, isn't it? It's a good little progression to get myself out the way. The first thing I think I'm going to drop is head on ratio of like 57, maybe. Not done anything. Possessions 1 per night, down to 10. Okay, it's going to be Baptiste Rowe. He played in our division last season, so he played in Liga 2. Um, so you've got to be mindful of that, right? That So he scored the same stats as the mid-table players from Liga 1, but in our division. So that's a slightly like lesser level, isn't it? So that's, that's something you need to be mindful of a little bit when you're looking at players that he managed to achieve their same stats but a lower level, which means probably not as good of a player. Uh, we'll show this him anyway, because he's the only player in world football that uh, appeared these these uh, stats. Right, we've hit Panera's box now. I have to get rid of a couple of things, but it's still very much exactly the same as before, really, in terms of the profile of play and the stats that we're looking at. So, Guga. I'm not familiar with Guga too much, but he looks amazing, and he's going to cost us about probably two million if we were to get him. I'm going to shortlist him in case something happens, but I just think we're going to miss out on him for now. But that's a shame because he looks like he, he would be, if we had like even 5 million to spend, I would strongly consider him. But unfortunately, we're going to have to move down this list. I've sorted them by transfer value to really look at the ideal scenario first and then just make our way down and hopefully find somebody that's good value as we move down this list. Like, are these players actually going to be able to contribute for us at all? That's my proper concern. That's why we're going to keep scouting them and see if they can do anything for us. See what the scouts do think. But like, so that's why they're getting the stats. But like, it's really hard when they do play at significantly worse under football is, you know, are you... Are they going to be able to do it in your league? It's it's hard to know. Okay, so some transfer listed players here. So these are players that are transfer listed that we could get for very, very cheap if we're willing to give them things like uh, sell on fee release clauses or put the transfer in instalments and things like that. But we have to be very careful how we do that. I want to structure us so we're a sustainable club. Janino Bakuna is one. He's going to definitely go on the shortlist and we'll scout him. I know I've gone too far down the list when I start seeing Connor Shaughnessy, who's part of the Burton save that we've got. And we know that we're in a bit of trouble there. No, no only joking, Connor. You're, you're a good player. For the for the, for the the Burton save, you're brilliant. But I mean, for this save, not so much thinking that you're ready for the money ball stuff. I mean, yeah, look at average rating. Look at that, Connor. What are you doing? Just to finish this off, I'm going to go through now. I've just dropped the stats a little bit on the right-hand side in a few different categories. And it's triggered a few more players to be shown. So I'm just going to go through and basically scout the ones that look okay. And then we can review those. Basically, I'm not really going to sign any players. I'm going to try not to sign any player at all that you haven't seen in some form, either as I'm about to offer them the contract or at some point, right? So I'm trying to avoid doing that. But just for the purpose of like saving time, I'm just going to scout them, some of these players off camera. I'm showing you the first few players that I see so that you see the, the scouting coming out in its fruition. But there might be the old player that you just, that I forget to show on camera and I end up getting him because he's the best fit. But I, I'm trying not to do that. But yeah, I'll just go through now and scout the rest of it. So I'll see you in a second when we'll go through the wingback stats. Okay, money ball numbers for wingback is as follows for us. By the way, I am going to make this available for you to download. This will be in a package with the, the all the new custom views, the existing ones, the new ones for the squad views, and this money ball uh, spreadsheet will all be available for you in one download. So you can copy and do exactly the same thing as me. It's set up for you to do three players. If you want to do four or five, you can just go back through the video where I explained the formula that I use, which is really simple. You can just copy it and you can extend it out to make it more players if you need to. But it's set up for three players. So that's how you want to use it. If you want to make it as stress-free as possible for yourself. Right, we'll skip the... I'm not going to include the goals and assists. It doesn't really matter. Apart from striker for goals, maybe a credit player for assists. These don't really matter. I just put them in there just because it's just nice to have the same... All the same things up until goals and assists. And that's when the stats change after that. That's why it's all bold from here onwards. I do include the goals and assists, but they're the first things you could remove quite easily for most of the positions. Okay, then dribbles per 90 is 2.25. Cross completion, 16%. Distance cover per 90 is 7.6. Sprints per 90 is 16.89. Open play key passes per 90 is 103. Chances created per 90 is 0 0.083. Progressive pass 2.2, tackle ratio 74%. Yeah, look at the rest of it. And headers one ratio 76%. I mean, the rest of it isn't too, I'm not too bothered about. Like for wing back, headers one per 90, I don't care. Header one ratio, I do care a little bit about, for example, there. Assists, I don't care about. Cross completion, maybe a little bit. But yeah, we, we, we can knock off you off of this if we need to. And don't forget, because we basically use prototype wingers here, we did at least with Coffee, for example, right? Coffee was a winger when we converted him back. We can apply this to wingers as well. And see if any of them can can defend. Because if they if they're a winger, even if they've got like sixty five percent tackle ratio, 
and 60% header win ratio. That's at least a start point. I know they're not going to be as good in the air or good defensively as a wing back. And if one of them is more of a prototype wing back and the other one's more like a winger, then that's okay for me. I don't really want two like orthodox fullbacks or two orthodox wingers. If I had to pick one of the two, I'd rather have two wingers and two fullbacks in this tactic. But yeah, just just so aware of that. By the way, how I decided which wing back to use, or which full back to use when they had a back four, I just picked the most attacking one because the most attacking one's going to be the most likely to be a wing back, right? I'm more pro to wing back. So that's how I decided which one to pick when it came to being a, a yeah, full back in a back four. Right, typical good news, bad news situation. Good news is there's a player that hits exactly on every single stat that we've looked at, and he plays at a level that should be okay. Bad news is going to cost us too much so he's going to go on the shortlist anyway but yeah that's unfortunate isn't it just a bit too much money but you could have been a really good player that's a shame okay looks like we got all the players we could have got from these stats let's try and drop some what should we drop first i'm going to drop cross completion on just a 15 that's got us a few more players let's take down maybe tackle ratio to 67 like i don't think i'd go this low for a full back but in a wing back in a back three i will same for this i mean on the left-hand side, we've got Dimitar and Sebastian here. Both good players. Both a little expensive, maybe. But the wages aren't too much. So maybe we could just about sneak it. Right, I've gone through the wing-backs here. Now, I've not really seen too many players that have stood out that are going to be any good. I did think this position might be a slight issue for us with the money we've got to spend. I'm just going to lock down some of these stats again and look for some transfer listed and contract expiring players. I'll let you know if there's anybody that stands out. And if not, I'll see you in a second for the centre-backs. If there is, I'll see you in a second for some absolute gems. Right then, here we are. This is the last one we're going to be doing centre-backs. Now, I'm not going to do goalkeepers, mainly because there aren't quite as many goalkeeping stats as there are for outfield players. So I'm just going to manually do that one. We're just going to copy that as we go on the fly, as it were. I'm not going to go through all the stats here, but we're going to just look at the key ones for the centre-back and read those out. So, tackle one ratio is 73%. That's important. That's still quite low, but that's what we've got from the players that finish with the table. So, there you go. Interceptions per 93.7. Okay. Let's look at... The next one probably would be maybe dribbles per 90 0 0.51, okay. Progressive passes, 3.71. And header one ratio of 83%. The rest of it is all bonus stuff if possible. But those are the crucial things right there. Okay, so the centre-back search has actually given us 111 players. That's quite a lot, isn't it? That's quite a lot of players to show. And I'm actually going to change one thing straight away, which will give us even more. And that is team conceded per 90 because... That might be a little bit harsh depending on the play, the team you're playing for. But, I mean, 1.25 is really high. Like, if they're conceding more than that, they're probably not doing a great job. But they could be in a relegation team, right, and be very good players themselves. So, we'll just remove that anyway. That puts up to 139. So, it doesn't change too much anyway. But give us a few more, in any case. Yeah, a lot of players playing at really poor levels of football, which doesn't help us. There's the odd player who plays, like, in the top Belgian League, for example. But they then are, like, really old or something. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to change this straight away, I think. We're not getting too many options here. Okay, I basically forgot I had goals and assists on. I took that off, and instantly it's given us 473 players, so quite a few. I'm just scrolling down now to get to a valuation that's going to be realistic for us. Okay, we've got here, Ivanildo Fernandez. He looks quite good. He plays Portuguese Premier League, scores really good across the board. Tackle ratio is slightly higher than what we're looking for, which is good. He is on 83% head win ratio, which is right on the line. And looks pretty good. Progressive passes is quite high. There's so many. Let's just go straight to the transfer list and see who's available. Oh, I don't know. Can we do it? No, we can't do it. We can't do it. Okay, I've gone to basically contract expiring. A player here, Patrick Pfeiffer, looks he could be really good for us. Plays in Bundesliga 2, 6 foot 5, 81% tackle win ratio. Sprints per 90, 5.54. Open play key passive, 0 0.19. Dribbles per 90, 0 0.22. So we can travel from the back with it at 6 foot 5. So. Head of ratio is 88%. He looks really good. Like, really, really good. I still think that five foot is going to be, like, our number one target. What is What do the scouts think? They don't know yet. I'm just looking at the fact that he's good at everything else, but he's 6'5 and dominant in the air, and he can travel from the back with it. Like, he's my number one target because we can get him on a free transfer as well. That's like a prop. That is the best money ball signing that I've seen so far. Now, granted, a lot of our scouts haven't come back with any of the scout reports on players yet, and that will become clearer as the next few weeks go on. But right this second, he is by far the best target I've found. I'm quite excited about that because we've got four centre-backs right now that are probably good enough. If we got him in, that would be five. We'd be done at centre-back. Or we could sell one of them, get back down to four, but then have more money to spend on other positions, which is more likely what I would do. And Lafort would probably be my target to get rid of because he's, he's 29. He's the only one that's left-footed. It sort of lets us build our team 
with the right footers. It just makes it easier to to then judge them against each other. And yeah, he's the one that's got a wanted sign on him right now. So, okay, Montessar Talabi in Liga 1. So the division we're actually going to be playing in next season. Transfer listed, we could probably get him for about 200 grand, I reckon. Uh, tackle win ratio is 74%. I have dropped the stats a little bit, so there's probably a couple that he's a little low on. Just looking to see what they are. Dribbles per night is very, very low. 0.08 isn't great. Uh, Head to ratio, though, is good. Tackle ratio is okay. Is I guess possessions one is a little low, is it? Yeah, I think that's what was a little low. But, I mean, there isn't anything that stands out that is really low on, so I'm okay with that. Okay, last one is goalkeepers. We're just going to manually... Uh, copy one of the goalkeepers there and just copy their stats. Okay, in my goalkeeping search, I managed to find uh, Nuruddin here. He looks really good. Like, plays in the Belgian top league. He scored a lot highly on all of the, the things I looked at, and his average rating is really poor. But apart from that, he looked he looked all right. I don't know, I'm going to give him a scout. It should be okay. Right, we've done it. We've got through all of our scouting for the money ball system in our first proper transfer with Paris FC. That was that was really in depth. I spent a lot of time doing that. I don't know how many hours it actually was, but went through it quite in depth. Mainly because I had to put all the custom views and the spreadsheets together. It doesn't take that long normally, but obviously when I have to do it all the, for the first time, it took quite a long time. So, yeah, what I'm going to do now is play through the transfer window. Thing to look out for: I have offered out Hamel out for transfer. Oh, oh no, some youngsters I have as well, and maybe Lafort I'll offer out amongst a couple of others, and we'll just see what offers we can get for a couple of them. It doesn't mean I'll necessarily definitely sell them, but I want to see what kind of funds we can get. If there's a left wing back that I really like and I think will be really good, I will then consider selling Hadjam for like three plus million. If I'm in doubt, I don't think I'll do that because it's really important that we've got good wing backs, so we'll see. But that's going to do that. Right, okay, I'll see you at some point in the summer. I don't know when it's going to be. I normally come back roughly sort of like towards the sort of middle or end of July because that's when we've got a lot of scouting done. We've sold off a player's contracts and we're looking to confirm the transfers, right? So that's when I'll next see you and you'll see me. So I'll see you in a little bit and hopefully we get some of these transfers in. The transfer budget, I just can't believe the transfer budget. Can you? Like 1.34 million. I just, I hope that changes, but I fear that it won't. Right, I've, I've got to bring this to you. It's only a couple of days after the fact. It says, The Porto are delighted that you've achieved one of the objectives laid out in the club's vision. Repair the club's financial damage. Past. Two years ahead of schedule. So, there you go. We definitely bloody did that. Like, give me some money, board. Okay, a few things to bring to you. One is that we did actually miss out on our favourite centre-back. Yeah, Patrick Pfeiffer. He signed a new contract with his current club while my scouts were scouting him. So, absolutely devastating. He would have been amazing. Um, but I mean, he signed the contract for 27 grand a week. So is it likely we would have got him? No, because if we'd have offered him a contract, they would offer him a contract anyway, then he would have signed for them. So we didn't really miss out on him. He wouldn't have come anyway, but it's, it's a it's a shame. He would have been amazing, but there you go. Good news is that we have got our first two players about to come in. We've got a central midfielder in Philip Clement and the goalkeeper, Nuruddin. So Nuruddin, the goalkeeper we looked at, looks really good. They rate him quite highly to the, the old scouts. Everybody really rates him, so, and he got had good stats, looking good. And the Philip Clement, so I'm going to confirm these two here. Clement comes on eight grand a week. He'll be our starting 10, potentially, or he could play as a pivot player, as well as the more attacking one, whichever way around it comes. I have got negotiations currently on another player that's to play in a 10 role. The problem is that that player does look better than him, but they're on 17 grand a week instead of eight. So it might come down to delaying that transfer two times in a row to try and see what else we can sign in other positions before then we commit to that amount of wages, right? So Clement and the goalkeeper are going to come in. Those are the first two. And the fixture list is out. We're going to be playing Montpellier the first game away, then two games at home. Our first game against PSG in the Paris Derby is going to be 3rd of December. And then the return game is going to be on the 25th of February. So interesting stuff. I'll see you in a little bit and we'll try and confirm some more transfers and see how we're doing. Okay, this is probably going to be your last update before we get to like the start of the season and we go through all the remaining transfers. I just thought I'd bring you up to date on what's happened. So we just got into like the 2nd and 3rd of July here. So all the players that are on loan have come back. Now, there was only one player that I was unsure whether to sell or keep. And it's this guy here, Czech Umar Diakate. Now, I'm selling him for 2.6 million, which isn't a lot. Isn't, but for us, it's a lot, but it's not maybe the most. If I kept him in the first team in two seasons, he could probably be as good as our other starters. He's a good youngster, but in terms of this save, that 2.6 million right now is more worth to me than trying to develop him. Maybe it does get to be worth maybe 10 million in a couple of years' time, but I really need that money right now to make sure I can improve all areas of the team. But I think we've done well so far in terms of players in. We managed to bring in Christian Adurso, who's going to be our starting number 10, and it probably means that then Clement could be our starting CDM on the right, which is a pretty good midfield, I would say, so far. 
Uh, Frederick Lombard is going to probably be our left CDM as our like pivot player, the real defensive field player though. And again, I think he's another really good player that managed to sign. And in total, there we spent you know just 1.3 million, I think, mostly up front as well, which is which is good. Maddy Diara comes in as a left footed winger and he's going to be our backup left wing back I think he's going to be a backup for Hadjam and a more attacking option than Hadjam which is going to be interesting again on a free transfer a really good deal I think he may not be quite good enough but as a backup he should be okay Pablo Neris now I signed Pablo Neris for a free transfer and a lot of clubs went in for him talking Porto I think Benfica did as well so he must be pretty good. I don't think I've seen him before in Foot Manager, so I have no idea how good he is, but apparently he was he had a lot of interest in him. Now, the game or the coaches seem to think he's a better winger than a striker. Maybe his finishing isn't the best, but he's going to play as a striker for us. But look, he could play wing back if we need him to. You know, if we do need him to, he can play wing back, which is which is really good for us. But he comes in as a striker. Get on a free chance for a pretty good signing. Kava was the was the Iranian striker that we looked at early on in our search. I think maybe one of the first players we looked at. He was really good playing for Tractor in Iran. And yeah, he's going to come in as a backup striker for Morgan. I think he's excellent for that. And he comes in on a on a free transfer. And then lastly, Moreno. Now, Moreno is a right-footed winger. So he's going to be our potential first-choice wing back. He's going to have to learn to play there. Comes on a free transfer from the, uh, from the Colombian First Division. So interesting to see whether he's really going to be good enough. Now, according to the coaches, they really love him as a winger. But he looks he looks really good. And as a, as maybe he's a backup number 10 as well. If we need him to be, whatever we want, whatever we want him to be, he's going to be a good player for us. So I don't know. We've done surprisingly well, I think so far, but the coach reports could be well off. Like they're saying they're good, they're decent league on players, etc. They could be just way off. We don't really know. I have no idea until we look at the attributes at some point in the later in the series. So now the reason I'm selling Diakate for 2 million is because I've got an offer accepted for Guga. Now Guga was the central field player I said would be amazing if we could get him. Now, his offer's a bit deceiving. It says 400 grand, but they have got 50% of the next sale. So it's the only way we could realistically do it financially, right? Um, and 17 grand a week is a lot of wages, but that would mean our central field position is almost completely fine. Almost for two years in terms of the pivot players and the attacking field players. I think I think it's worth it right now. And we can use the excess transfer budget to start looking at maybe still a centre back, maybe a wing back, but a lot of the team's now set which is really nice for us. So when we see each other next, it's going to be the first game of the season against Montpellier. And we'll go through all of the transfers that we haven't done so far and recap how we think we've done and go through that kind of stuff. And then we'll finish off the episode with a game against Montpellier. That'll be the final part of the episode. It'll be us playing our first game and getting in to that. Okay, I'll see you in a month. And let's see how we get on with the rest of the transfer window. Right, here it is. The first game of the season after our first Moneyball transfer window. I can't wait to get into this. So let's take you through the remaining transfers we made that you missed off of camera. I cannot remember if you actually saw Google or not, but if you didn't, we brought him in for for 350 grand. That does include a 50% of the next sale to them, though it's the only way we could really do the transfer. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure when we sell him, we're going to sell him for like over a million. So we're still going to make a profit on him. It just won't be really the, the profit that we really want. But we, we managed to get him in for 350 grand for a player that's going to be probably one of our best players for the next couple of years. So it's definitely a really good value for money signing. Especially considering he hit all the stats that we needed all the, all the way across the boards. And yeah, I was really impressed with him. And please managed to get him in. Nahual Ferrezi. Now, he actually is really, really good. He's been picked up for 1.5 million. Probably one of the bigger transfers outlays in terms of money all up front. I don't think he's got any kickbacks in terms of percentage of the next sale. But yeah, he comes in for 1. What's it, again? 1.5 million pounds. Looks like he's going to be one of our better better centre backs for for the season. Coach reports all look good. Nothing about pace, but good in the air as well. So I don't know. Look, could be a really good player to play in that sort of middle of the back three. Maurizio Gomez. Now he was somebody we looked at early on in the in the search. I'm not sure again whether it's made it into the episode or not. But he enjoys big matches, possesses a fair amount of pace, and he can play as a left wing back or as a pivot for us. So he can really do sort of two jobs. And he's going to be pretty much used in that order. But he's a backup wing back to Hadjan first, although you're going to see he's probably going to start because there's an injury to Hadjan, which isn't great. And then can play as a backup pivot player for us as well. Again, another player that's come from the Colombian League. And last but definitely not least, Montessar Talbi. Again, the player that we, I definitely would have shown him on camera, I believe, because I looked at him. He's one of the few centre backs that came up early on, I think it was, as one of our centre backs that hit all the stats that we were looking for. And we're able to get him for eight and uh, sorry, six hundred and seventy-five grand, and that is all up front, no kickbacks. He's already played in the French first division last season for FC Lorient, and I can't wait to get him into the team either. I think we've got a pretty good strength and depth now at the back, 
And that is it, you're back up to date. You've seen all the other transfers up to this point. And yeah, I mean, in terms of money in, money out, we spent 300 grand this season in total, officially. That's the total net spend for us, which is which is good. And last season, our net spend was, uh, you know, minus two and a half million, pretty much. So pretty good. One downside is that we've actually got five non-EU players. We can only register four. So our Iranian striker is an emergency player, really. I mean, if one of the other non-EU players gets injured, he'll replace them in the squad in probably January, but it just means that he'll only be there for, like, the cup games, and if there's a long-term injury, maybe. But for now, he can't really get registered into the squads. I just I couldn't turn down Gomez, and incidentally, I'm pleased that I did bring in Gomez, because Hadjam is out for three to six weeks, which is not great right at the start of the season. In terms of contracts, there are quite a few players that had their contracts expiring this season coming, this summer coming. And we've renewed all of them, mostly the centre backs, and they've all renewed their contracts. They're all happy again now, which is which is good. It's very likely that players like Debila and Sam will be sold at the end of the season. That's based on the fact that we're going to stay up, of course. I think that we'd probably be in trouble for our job if we go down. I, I know not that it's realistic. It's just you know, I think the board would be pretty harsh on us if we were to go down. On that note, let's look at the club vision. Work within wage budget. We're on course for that, are we? Not really. It's close. Some other objectives here. So avoid relegation. Yeah, they want us to avoid relegation, really. Um, repair the club's financial damage. Continue to avoid relegation. That's all they want, really. So, yeah. I mean, this one's never happening, so they can just forget this right now. I'm, I'm never agreeing to this. We we are going to be buying players where the value is, right? That's the whole point of Moneyball. Where's the value at? And the value for, Where's the value at for our stats? And they were above the age of 23 in this case. So let's have a look at the ages of the players right now, profile of players. So our oldest player is 31, and our youngest player is 20. As a pretty like in terms of like a squad, most of our players are in that sort of 26 to 23 bracket, which is pretty good actually. Right then, let's conclude this episode, this wonderful episode with a game against Montpellier. We played them away. Let's have a quick look at the preseason or the season preview. So we are favourite to finish 16th at the moment, 400 to one to win the title. PSG are the only team that played a game so far. Well, against I think Rennes because they had to play somebody else, of course, and they won their game. Oh, no, sorry, no, we won the last ones. No, no, they played on the Friday, though, didn't they? Yeah, there you go. So we're one of the last teams to play. Let's put a team together and see what our first 11 is going to be going into the season. Okay, so you're starting 11 for the season, not necessarily for the first game because there's a couple of injuries, suspensions, that kind of thing, right? But for your first team for the season is going to be, at least for now, it's going to be Nuruddin in goal with Ferrezi, Talbi, and Sami across the back with Hadjam and Moreno as the two wing backs with Lornberg and Guga as two pivots, with D'Urso and Morgan with Neris up front. That's going to be your team. Potential early changes to the first 11 could be that Benawa comes in to pivot. That's a potential change. And I would say that maybe at centre-back, it could be that Ndai or Dabila replace Samir. That's another change. The rest of the team, I think it's going to be pretty close. Maybe Clement goes in for Ndurso here. For so yeah, that's the only real changes I can see apart from that. I think everybody else is going to be pretty much locked into their position, but you never know. Let's see what happens. In terms of this game, Hadjam's going to come out and we're going to throw in uh, Gomez. Then we'll just do that on the bench. Coffee has to be out there because he's suspended. And the rest of the team looks like they are ready to go. Everybody else is fit enough to play. Let's get into the first game. Come on, Paris. I have no idea what to expect. Part of me thinks that the uh, the ratings that the coaches have given the players is going to be wrong, but we'll see what happens anyway. Assistant manager says, pressure is all on them. So what do we have to lose? Okay, come on, boys. Let's go cause an upset. Montpellier are going to play a 4-2-3-1. Okay. And we are underway. First highlight, Gomez throws it into Lundberg. It's two minutes into the game here. Oh, he's giving it away. Gomez looks to play it back into somebody. A backup left wing back plays into Neris early on. Goes back to the goalkeeper. Nice and easy for them. So Samir is terrible in the air, and I really didn't want to play him this season, but I just thought I just thought the other two centre-backs are going to be quite slow. So he balances them out a little bit by being a slightly quicker centre-back as that goes wide. So that's the reasoning for leaving in Samir instead of playing the other two, is to have at least one of the back three have a bit of pace, give us a bit of a chance, I think. Whereas having three centre-backs all exactly the same and the same profile of centre-back, I think maybe isn't the best, but but we'll see. I wasn't afforded enough to be to be picky enough on centre backs this year, making sure that one of them was quicker or or good at dribbling out from the back or playing out from the back. Right, I tried to use progressive passes and dribbling, dribbles per ninety and that kind of thing, but I didn't really have enough options to be able to choose anybody. We just had to get the best defenders, really. Tabi here, middle centre back, goes long because it's Morgan. Now, is Morgan going to be good enough to score goals at this level? He's through. Is he going to score? Oh my Christ! What was that? Because obviously he scored loads of goals last season, then he went massively off the boil towards the end of the season which was an area of concern. I've stuck with him though and decided to give a bit of faith in him and allow him to have the chance to, to play as the first choice striker this season. Going to take Ursoff, put on Clement 
And, oh, I'm not sure about the other one, though. Maybe we take off Morgan and put on Ruben Mesa. Yeah, let's do that. Corner, Clement. Sit in, headed towards goal, and it's in, yes! Talby gets the big head at the near post. It's a corner goal for Paris FC, and we go 1-0 up. Love this. Whipped into the near post. The set of backs all sort of going for it. TB gets there, and it's 1-0. Okay, we're going to go defensive here. Going to take off Sam Potton and Dye to see up the game as well. Hopefully that's good enough for us. Late highlight. Set piece for them. They go whipping it in. It's headed away. Mesa's going to... Oh my goodness, what a challenge. Round of applause, Mesa. I do love that. I respect that. Good lads. I've gone back to attacking mentality because we're down to 10 men. I've left the uh, the left striker as a shadow striker going into the last minutes of the game. One minute left, five minutes of added time. Four minutes, three minutes, two minutes. Last minutes. And we see it out of three. Yes, come on. Big one, they'll win. First game of Paris FC in Liga 1. We'll say that was special, lads. Well done. Not many highlights in the game at all. You probably, I don't know how many you would have even seen. There wasn't very many highlights at all in the game. That's a great start for the boys. There we go. Wow. That's going to... That's going to do the episode. That's what we're waiting for to see whether it would come out to fruition, at least in the first game. It's only the first game, of course. But was it away from home? It was, wasn't it? That's a good result. It's a good result. What a start from the boys early on. I'm, I'm worried about Morgan. If he doesn't keep scoring again, I don't know what we're going to do with him. But let's cross that bridge when we come into. We've got no money left to spend this season. Bank balance is good. We're going to finish up in the, at least not in the red at the end of the season. Right? That's a good thing for us. And yeah, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things go throughout the rest of the season. In terms of next episode, then, I'm thinking we come back for the Toulouse game and Troyes because Troyes were also one of the teams that we were buying stats from, right? So that's a really good early indication of how far we're from Troyes. We get all these other games into the season and then we get to match ourselves up against one of the teams we bought the stats from and see just how far we off of them at that point of the season. So I think we'll do we'll do that. We'll come back at the end of September against Toulouse and then Troyes in that game there. And then after that, I think it's very obvious which one the next one would be. PSG against Lille at the start of December. There we go. That is going to do the episode. Thank you so much for watching. I absolutely love this series. This episode was a big effort and it's going to be quite a long episode. I have no idea how long this is. It's probably going to be closer to an hour, I would have thought. But it's going to be chaptered up so you can sit through as much or as little as you want. All I can say is a massive thank you for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.